Grammy, better known as Suzanne. I'm missing my co-host today due to trouble storm Elsa. Unfortunately, her internet went out, so Nanny might be um, trying to get on, and she might join us if the internet works, thanks to Tropical Storm Elsa. Um, but uh, she's with us today in spirit, and we're very excited about having our series on the joys and blessings of grandparenting. Today, we're going to be featuring on grandparents, raising grandchildren, and other relatives raising children, better known as grand families. And this is very dear to my heart. My dad was raised by his grandmother, who was four foot eight inches, and she was the wife of a pharmacist, a farmer in Indiana, good old Hoosier, and she just loved my father. And she took care of him because her his parents used to travel and live abroad in Ethiopia and uh, Thailand and Germany and all kinds of places. He was with American International Development, but. I, I can't tell you what a joy she was for him. And she was his heart, his life. So it's all about these grandparents. We really love them. And with that responsibility of raising his grandkids, what what a wonderful role to have a grandparent in that capacity. So today, we're gonna to begin the conversation with two fantastic experts. One is my good friend, Amy Goyer. Amy is an author, speaker, consultant, and she wrote this fabulous book called Juggling Life, Work, and Caregiving. And I have to tell you, I've used it. I've been a caregiver. I am a caregiver right now of my spouse. And this could not have been a better book at the time. It still is. I use it every day. So Amy is a nationally known writer, and she is a celeb. She is on NBC's Today Show. She has over 35 years of experience in the field of aging. She also serves as AARP's National Family and Caregiving Expert Columnist and Spokesperson and moderates AARP's Facebook Family Caregivers Discussion Group. Her Columns and Caregiving YouTube series share her personal caregiving journey as well as practical, actionable tips for caregivers. Our second guest today is Dr. Carrie Littlewood and go Tar Heels. She went to UNC <laughs> Chapel Hill and uh, she also is an instructor at the University of South Florida. And uh, when she and I started talking, I realized I know this name because she was the assistant director of the social, social work at East Carolina University in Greenville. So she's got a lot of connections with North Carolina. And we are so fortunate, but the best part is, is her fantastic research. You are in for a real, real treat. You're going to learn a lot from her. And she has done so much with grand families and looking at the multi-generational aspect, of the lifespan. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just mention to you all to be sure to look in the chat. If you have a question, please post it for our guest today. Also, uh, we want to make sure you look at these websites, www.grandfamilies.org, www.aarp.org forward slash family, and www.generationsunited.org. Those are things that are really, really great. Uh, since Beverly couldn't be here with us today, I do want to mention her personal story that she has raised her nephews and nieces besides her own kids, and she gets it. And she has sacrificed a lot over the years, but I can tell you, she's raised some wonderful people and adults. And so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over uh, with a question to Amy to get us started. But before I do that, I just want to mention when you go to that website at www.grandfamilies.org, Amy's going to share with you how to navigate that, how to get your fact sheet. And here in North Carolina, there are over 85,000 grandparents who are actually raising their grandchildren. And so um, this will give you an opportunity to be more familiar and what resources are there. And so let's go ahead and get started. So Amy, what AARP resources are available for grand families? 
Thank you, Suzanne. It is such a great pleasure to be here with my dear friend, Suzanne, and um, Carrie, a longtime colleague. We um, have at AARP a number of resources for grandparents, especially grandparents raising grandchildren in this case. And one of the most important resources that Suzanne mentioned is the Grand Facts State Fact Sheets. And it's a project that, gosh, I worked on, I don't know how long ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago or something, getting these started, working very closely with um, partners, Generations United and the Brookdale Foundation and the Child Welfare League of America and the Children's Defense Fund and a number of partners. And the fact sheets, we created a fact sheet for every state and the District of Columbia and the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico outlining what's going on in that state, what are the key resources, some of the data for that state, et cetera. Um, Generations United and the American Bar Association kind of take the lead on those fact sheets now, but AARP is a partner in those fact sheets. And what I wanna do is share my screen so that I can show you exactly how to find your state's fact sheet. Because it's not only gonna give you, like I said, data and that sort of thing, but it's actually gonna give you contact information and for local programs and those sorts of things that can really make a difference. So let me share my screen here. So if you could, can y'all see that? Suzanne, chime in here and let me know. Can y'all see my screen? Not, not yet. Not yet. Um, okay, hold on, let me put my glasses on. I, it said I was sharing, where am I? Hold on. Sorry, guys. I thought it was working. Um, it shows that I'm screening. I think, Steve, uh, behind the scenes, you need to change the view so that you can see. There you go. There you go. Okay. So these are the state fact sheets. This is the landing page at grandfamilies.org, which is a, a site that the American Bar Association and Generations United have done a lot of work on to have... Um, resources and all kinds of state laws, state laws pertaining to grandparents are all listed there and the state fact sheets. So if you go to um, the fact sheet the on the page, you're gonna go to resources and then you'll navigate down here to where it says state fact sheets. So for example, I'm gonna scroll down and we are gonna look at, of course, North Carolina. Oops, that's Spanish version. Guess what? Um, they have them in English and Spanish. So, all right, can y'all see that? This is the state fact sheet for North Carolina. And as Suze mentioned, Suzanne mentioned, there's more than 85,000 grandparents responsible for their grandchildren in the state of North Carolina. For every one child raised by kin in foster care, there are 31 being raised by kin outside the foster care system. So sometimes it's kind of a fallacy that children being raised by grandparents are all in the foster care system. They're not. They're being raised more, quote, informally. Many of them don't have a legal relationship with the children. Might be a grandparent, aunt, an uncle, it's a sibling even. Um, and they're raising these kids, maybe a cousin, and they often don't have the legal authority to be doing things. And there are a lot of reasons why some of y'all won't feel comfortable getting that legal relationship, we always urge people to try to do that. So if you go through the fact sheet, you'll find information about programs that can help. Key programs in the state of North Carolina. And we have, again, a fact sheet like this for every single state. Um, the Foster Family Alliance, the high, you know, if you had list by county, your different counties. Um, and then as you go through, the, and, and North Carolina has a good long fact sheet, there's a lot of resources there. Then we have information about public benefits. Um, and then we have uh, benefits.gov, uh, the elder care locator, which a lot of services for the grandparents or the older uh, family members, uh, TANF connections, social security, uh, SNAP, uh, nutritional assistance programs, food bank information, uh, health care, uh, and then any um, key benefits like tax credits. The, there are often tax credits available that if you're raising a child or raising uh, a relative, you can take advantage of. And then, of course, education uh, information 
and all legal information. And as I, as I started out, many uh, grandparents and other relatives don't have a legal relationship with the kids. So this is some information you can look into to find out about it, um, including adoption assistance if you decide to adopt them, guardianship, um, how to compare adoption and guardianship, what are the advantages and disadvantages, et cetera. And then any specific state laws that are available in your state. So that those are the state fact sheets. And I think they're just an incredible resource for uh, grandparents and other relatives raising children, whether you're a professional working with grandparents and other relatives raising children or you're actually raising them yourselves. So that's my number one resource um, that we always send people to. And I did want to share one other one with you. And I'm going to share my screen again. Um, and this is a guide for grand families that uh, I wrote uh, years ago and for AARP. And it is a, um, a guide with, has I think eight parts, been a while here, um, the getting started chapter. And then if you click on the next one, support, legal issues, finances, work, housing and safety, health, education and child care and family challenges. So if you just click on the next section, then it'll take you to the next session. And this is all about support and finding support and how do you find a support group, which could be incredibly helpful. Um, legal issues, again, some of the common things explaining what guardianship and custody are, what are the things to look for. So that's just another resource offered by AARP that I think is um, a really helpful resource for people, at least I hope it is. That's great, Amy, thank you so much. Something I, I just wanted to add, that if you're familiar with the area agencies on here in North Carolina, they were listed on that grand fact sheet. There are 16 and they have a program called the Family Caregiver Support Program. With that program, they have a grandparent um, element to that, that they can help grandparents. Uh, may it be maybe through some respite or it might be some services or programs to help them as well. You know, looking at the grandparent, they might help uh, themselves so they can also provide that and uh, get people set up for home delivered meals and so many other things. So, you know, be sure to look at that grand fact sheet because that's something that's really good. The other thing is at the Land of Sky Council of Governments Area Agency, in Asheville, they have created a toolkit for grand for grand families, and it is really awesome. And so, be sure to take advantage of that because that could be, you know, shared in exchange uh, for any county here in North Carolina. It's just got some really good information, so it's really uh, something to take advantage of on this. So, at this time, I'd like to go ahead and ask Carrie, Dr. Carrie Littlewood, about the research. Mm -hmm done. It is phenomenal. And the surveys she's done with grand families. So tell us, Carrie, share with us, what has, what has COVID done? What, what has COVID done about affecting grand families? Wow. Well, thank you again so much for having me uh, join your group. And, and I've been following, um, I've been following uh, Amy Goyer's work in this area for a long time too. And, and, and she's done such great work tailoring um, resources and supports for for grand families because a lot of these things are are um, available to foster parents to um, you know to to other to to others but not necessarily really uh, focused on those grandparents raising grandchildren so I wanted to let you know how blessed I am to be here with all of you um, today too. You know, COVID has been really challenging for uh, grand families in in a lot of the same ways that they've been for for a lot of us. Um, but with grand families in particular, really having a having challenges um, with uh, in the beginning, really trying to get information that was that was credible and that was. Um, really important for them to know how to keep the kids safe and how and healthy and how to keep themselves safe and healthy because many of these grandparents were in and are in a really vulnerable um 
uh, group for um, getting uh, COVID exposure, and this was prior to the vaccine, but many were living with, um, with children that were, you know, they've had to keep home because of uh, exposure. And, and that meant that if they're not working from home, they had to come home and work. And what do you do with these children while you're trying to work and help them through school online? Um, lots of technical challenges around moving the, the academics online and connecting with teachers who are also overwhelmed. So I think, um, I think a good way to look at it is, you know, how do, how do these families adjust to all of these things that we have never quite seen before? Um, and uh, just those unknown and where do you go for support? So um, I'm here representing a group called the Grand Families Outcome Work Group, and we've been working together for the last 10 years to really um, to really do some research on on grand families, and also um, you know try to engage grand families and translate some of these things into practice for those folks that are that are out there trying to to help families. Um, in our in our wave one survey that we did with grand families in COVID, we had about 600 caregivers, and uh, from all 50 states, and. One of the interesting things we found was that all of their so sources of social support, every single one of them had declined during COVID um, with the exception of Facebook live groups and Facebook groups. So I want to really say, you know, kudos to kudos to you all for um, keeping this group strong because this groups like this have been a real source of support for grand families um, and uh, the other the other piece that um, the other piece that we really like to hear about in wave one of our survey again which was last last June was um, the 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 blessings that the caregivers talked about spending time with the kids so that was really um that was really very very important to them was having this time with the kids um being being able to actually um uh you know sit down and and kind of be together for a long period of time so it had its challenges but a lot of caregivers were really you know thinking about what a blessing that's been for them and you can see the results of this particular survey on this link um if you go to grandfamilieswork.org um grandfamilieswork.org it's uh it will show some results of that first wave of the survey I also wanted to make sure in the chat that um, we can put the um, second wave of the survey, because guess what? We're doing a wave two of the survey because we've noticed that we are in a lot of different, um, we're in a lot of different spaces now uh, with COVID and, and how much has changed. And, and we're really, we're, our survey is actually only going to be open now until next week. And we'd really love to um, get some feedback from North Carolina uh, grand families about what you're experiencing right now um, during um, your caregiving. And this, um, we've noticed that caregivers have had some challenges around accessing um, the stimulus money. We've noticed that they've had some challenges accessing um, earned income tax child credits and uh, during tax time. And we've noticed that um, they've also had some challenges around vaccinations and other things. So, so we're really looking at those sources of support for those families um, during this new time which is really a time of changing. And, and one of the things that have, has elevated has been the challenge of um, finding childcare now that a lot of these grand, grandparents are going back to work in person. And um, that the summer is now really challenged in terms of summer camps and, you know, what do we do with these kids? So that's been really, um, that's been really interesting to also, um, to also think about with these results. 
Well, Carrie, this is just outstanding work, and I'm really excited about the outcomes, particularly what's happening in North Carolina. So please be sure to share that with us to see how we can collaborate and work together with all of our um, partner agencies across the state that are working with grand families. Um, at this time, you know, a question came up, Amy, this, this question is for you. And uh, somebody wanted to know what is benefits checkup and how can it help me as a grandparent? It's a really good question. Um, benefits checkup, I don't know if you can see me. Um, benefits checkup is a tool created by the National Council on Aging. And in it, you can put your information and then you can get a, a huge list of potential benefits that you may be eligible for. So you can either go to aarp.org slash benefits quick link and that takes you to a page where AARP has benefits guides for every state. And there is a link there and just click on benefits checkup and that will take you to the benefits checkup site and you'll you know you'll have to enter enter some information for yourself or your loved ones and then um, you'll get a, a report back that says you may be eligible for and then you will can go through the process of, of reading more about those benefits or actually submitting an application for the benefits so that's a really good way to kind of find out what are some of the things whether it be energy assistance for paying your utility bills um, again snap nutrition programs um, there, there's just a wide range, veterans benefits, um, all kinds of benefits that may help in the household. And if you're a grandparent raising a grandchild, it might be that there are household things that can help like the utilities, but there might be things that can help you, the grandparent um, financially, which makes it easier for you in turn then to raise the grandkids. Or there may be some things that they're eligible for too. And you can also always reach out to, um, your, if you have Medicaid, to the Medicaid caseworker, to the Area Agency on Aging, um, all of those resources and just say, is there anything I can get assistance with? And Amy, I, I heard you mention something about veterans. Tell us, what kind of veteran resources and support is there for grand families? You know, I'm not aware of any specific supports for grand families from the VA. Um, however, many grandparents do get into that situation where they have legal custody of, the, of grandchildren while their parents are deployed. And so the soldiers who are deploying will go, sh should always go through the process of doing that planning and giving them some legal authority while they are deployed. And the VA does offer some support in helping um, the soldiers prepare for deployment and that sort of thing. So that's something to definitely look into. And there may be some supports that I'm not as aware of that are specifically for those who are caring for the children um, when, when soldiers are deployed. But I think that that's the main thing. There are other veterans benefits, like I said, though, that are, are more for the grandparent that might be helpful. And so would you suggest uh, they could go to www.aarp.org slash veterans and um, download the military caregiver guide and get all those fantastic resources there? Would that be helpful to them? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, Suzanne. That's a great, great uh, information. Because if you, you know, again, that guide is more for caregiving for uh, a spouse, partner, a, a parent, a grandparent, an older adult. But not and not as much geared towards raising grandchildren but there are some great resources in there that might also be helpful with um if you're raising grandchildren some v veterans the, all the contact information for the va the va programs uh, and again remember that many grandparents who are in this situation where they're raising grandchildren are also caregiving for a spouse, a partner, a parent. Um, and so if, you're, if your loved one is a veteran or if they are the surviving spouse of a veteran, there may be some supports available for them. Great, thank you so much. I, I know there's a financial security guide also for military caregivers on that site. So that might be something to assist as well. Um, so Carrie, I'm, I'm just kind of curious um, to ask you, um, when this uh, wave two comes out, um, how can we make sure that people can are aware of it and we can share the outcomes of this great research that you're doing? Oh, thank you so much. You know, right now you can, uh, grant, grant families can go right on that link and complete the survey. 
um, it's really important that we get the results out to to a wide variety of, of folks. That's one of our one of our missions of our group is really to make sure that we can provide results and also some practice recommendations. So um, I will keep in close contact with you, and as soon as we get some some results, I'll I'll share them with with you in this group. And also, you can um, look at our uh, our website, the uh, GrandFamiliesWork.org that will have, um, that will also have uh, our information. That's fantastic. You know, I'm just thinking out loud. Um, I would love to share this link with 106 grandparents who are raising their grandchildren here in Wilmington, North Carolina, who we work with. And the, it's under the YWCA and the Presbyterian Church here in Wilmington, but um, we provide programming and arts and crafts. We even had Santa Claus come one year um, for the grandparents and the grandkids, and it was lots of fun. But we do this in conjunction with another group called the Assistance League here. And um, if it would be okay, I'd love to share that link with the folks over at the Y. Would that be okay? Oh, absolutely. Share right. it as widely as, as you like. And also if we get a if we get in a large enough sample, I think in North Carolina, it'd be really great to to look at some North Carolina specific uh, results as they apply to, to your state because um, you know, we might find that um, that there are, you know, certain issues going on in terms of um, COVID and grand families that um, that we should know about and, and really tend to. So we could also do that for you. So just one last question. I know we have just a few minutes left, but um, what grand family support groups are available uh, for grand families? I'll throw it out to both of you. Well, that's one of the places where those fact sheets are really helpful. And they just recently had an update and I think it, it's really important to check there first because some of those support programs and support groups are listed there. The other thing is to contact your uh, area agency on aging. As Suzanne mentioned, the family caregiver support program program includes, they are able to spend some money on the grand family support. So there may be support groups that they are aware of that they can give you the contact information for. Carrie, you probably have something to add. Um, yeah, I think, I think there are a lot of, uh, different uh, groups that actually, you know, that, that emerge. And um, I, I would say that the, the area agencies on aging are, are also one of the best ways to get connected and the fact sheets are, are wonderful. Um, what we've noticed in terms of support groups this past year is that many have uh, gone to online uh, groups um, and, uh, and, and, which means that they're a lot more easily accessible to, to grand families. So, so yeah. we're noticing that when they're online, they're more easily accessible. You don't have to think about the transportation and the childcare. And that really opens up a whole new world of support for some of these families. And the ability to connect with another caregiver is, is really so important. And, you know, support groups are one of the, the go-to uh, most widely used uh, supports for uh, grand families. So thanks so much for asking that question. Great. Yeah. See, we have a question um, in the comments section and it's about a grandparent raising two grandkids and they only have temporary custody. Where do they go for help to get formal custody? Yeah, that, you know, the, in the, my, the grand family guide on AARP that I mentioned, um, you can, uh, there's a, a legal section. So read up on it then. One of the hard things with, in these situations is often the expense of legal help. There are some things you can do what they call pro se, where you can go to the court yourself and fill out papers and file for custody, guardianship, whatever it is in your state uh, yourself without the assistance of a lawyer. If you do that, make sure that you read up on it. Sometimes if you go to the courthouse to get the forms and the th information, they actually will have some tutorials or someone maybe who would help you with that, filling out that paperwork. So ask a lot of questions, make sure you're doing, you're, you're covering everything. If you wanna get some legal assistance, um, you wanna try and find a, an attorney who specializes in family law. 
because these, these are family issues and you, you want someone who really knows what they're doing in this situation, what, what's the best way to go about it, what will get the best results. Some families have mediation, which makes it a little bit less acrimonial to help try and figure out the arrangements together. Um, and you can go to the American Bar Association. If you just Google uh, American Bar Association free legal help, then they have, they'll take you to a page where you can um, look for a pro bono attorney as well, one who doesn't, who's doing it for free as a, as a service. Thank you, Amy, for that so much. I know also in the grand fact sheet, it does refer to Legal Aid of North Carolina and they yeah. do provide some assistance. So thank you so much for that. You know, it, it's at the closing time. We've got one minute. I can't believe it already. <laughs> I I really want to be sure that everybody's viewing today. Please share this. Uh, go to facebook.com forward slash AARPNC. Wonderful information that could really help some folks that are raising their grandchildren or relatives raising children, please get the word out. Also, we have some upcoming events um, up on August 12th. Uh, Nanny and Grammy will be talking about going back to school and how grandparents can help. And then on September 9th, we have a Grandparents Day special and it's with our AARP research on Boomers and Zoomers with Lego Foundation and Georgetown University, Vanderbilt, University of South uh, Dakota, and University of Pennsylvania. So we're very excited about that. And again, we'll be at the same time from 12 noon to 1230. So Amy and Carrie, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much for your time today and your expertise. You empowered so many. And may you be blessed forever. Take care. Thank you. Bye -bye. And Thank I just you. want to say, Suzanne, you guys, Suzanne is an amazing human being, and you all need to be very grateful that she's doing this Facebook Live with you all. I've known her for many years. So kudos to you, Suzanne. Thank you. Thanks, Amy. Thank Back you so you. much. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.